My name is Rudy Gabries, and I was born in 1918. I was a bombardier on a four-engine B-24 heavy bomber stationed at Norwich, England. That's me on the left when I was declared best bombardier in my class. I completed 14 missions with the 448th Bomb Group, 8th Air Force, over Germany, Holland, and France. That's me on the left about the first time I thought that my luck had run out. German flak had hit me in the back of both my legs on my fourth combat mission. While I recuperated in an English hospital for a month, my crew came to visit me. I felt terrible that they were going on a mission without me to Germany to hit the Kiel Canal in late 1943. My airplane and my crew never came back to base at Seething Airfield, Norfolk, England. They went down in the North Sea with no survivors. Luck is a funny thing to flyers. Still, mine hadn't run out. After my month in the hospital, I was assigned to the B-24 and a new crew, Wabash Cannonball. In February 1944, we took 200 flak hits and half the plastic bubble where I sat as bombardier was blown out. I figured my supply of luck must be pretty near dry when we took off to bomb Big B, Berlin, on Sunday, March 5, 1944. Bad weather over Berlin diverted us to our secondary target, the German airfields at mont de marsan in southern France. Our B-24 was Sweet Sue, my third 24 of the war. My name is Lawson Campbell. I flew with Rudy and Sweet Sue on that Sunday over France. That's me on the right with Rudy. I was the airplane's co-pilot. That day we carried incendiary, or fire bombs. Near our target, before we dropped our bombs, a German shell went clean through Sweet Sue, just missing the fuel tank. The shell did not explode, but it made an 18-inch hole. It damaged the bomb base so we couldn't dump tons of napalm from our damaged airplane. That Rudy. With the bomb bay doors wide open, Rudy took off his parachute and went down into the 18-inch wide catwalk between our bomb racks and he pried the fire bombs loose. You could see the ground almost three miles beneath Rudy's boots. Sweet Sue's war was over. Together, our pilot, First Lieutenant Bob Martin and Campbell, bellied her into a green wheat field in southern France, near the hamlet of Chapouton. The radio man bailed out. He pledged never to ride a heavy down for a crash landing. The other nine of us walked away unhurt from the wreck. By nightfall, the French resistance found us. A resistance translator who spoke English, Madame Elise Giroux, took in four of us. The rest were taken in by other French partisans. My name is Elise Giroux. German soldiers were everywhere, looking for downed airmen. I hid four of the Americans at my home. The Germans immediately executed any French citizen who hid Allied airmen. We divided the nine airmen among us. I was helped by my neighbors, Monsieur and Madame Gadieu. Rudy was the only one who remained with my family. Madame Giroux had a wood pile in the courtyard of her home. We hollowed it out so I could climb inside and pull some logs and brush over my tiny entrance hole. There, I hid from the German patrols, ready to send me to some prison camp, or worse, and ready to stand Elise and the mechanic and his wife in front of a firing squad. That luck again. Elise hid me for seven more months until our little corner of occupied France was liberated in September of 1944. After our liberation, that's me, and that's Monsieur Gadou. I survived the war because of these people, these heroes. After the war, Elise Giroux was decorated with the United States Medal of Freedom and the French Croix de Guerre. In 1967, President Johnson honored Elise again with a White House tour and tea hosted by Lady Bird Johnson. I honored Elise as best I could she became godmother to my first daughter and to my only grandson. And best of all, in 2005, 
my grandson named his first child Elise to honor the woman who risked her own life and her family's to save mine.